that really just resonated with me. And I never once ever in the, I've been trading since 2009, 11 years that I have been trading, did I ever have that thought until reading your book? Like you just opened my mind mm -hmm. and blew it all of a sudden with just a one simple question. Why do you trade? This is the How to Trade Stocks Options podcast brought to you by 10MinuteStockTrader.com where we cover finance, stocks, options, entrepreneurship, education, and money. And here's your host, voted one of the top 100 people in finance, Christopher Ewell. Hey, listen, if this podcast was useful to you at all, I really highly suggest that you go check out the full trading course at AIStockTradingSystem.com. That's AIStockTradingSystem.com. Hey, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell so you'll be notified every time we give you more tools, tips, and tricks to help you trade faster and trade smarter every single week. Hey there, traders. Welcome back to today's How to Trade Stocks and Options podcast. Today, we have a special guest online, my friend, Mike Lamont. Hey, Mike, I heard that you um, figured out how to write a book. And uh, <laughs> now I wanted to have you on the show and talk about it. Yeah, man. Thanks so much for having me on again. It's always a pleasure talking to you. And yes, I figured out somehow how to write the this book here, the Mara Mind Shift Guide. Dude, that's really, really cool. You know, um, I was talking to a business colleague one day and, uh, you know, trying to figure things out. Right. And I was like, listen, just keep hitting the keys and eventually one of them will be the right one. Just keep going at it. And mm -hmm. you know what? You hit enough keys where we popped out a new book, The Mara Mind Shift Guide. Now, first, before we get down this rabbit hole too deep, there's going to be a link below for you to go check it out on Amazon. Um, Mike has that available now. And it's uh, actually, as of the time of this recording, you can get on Kindle Unlimited for free. Now, that can always change. But right now, you can go check it out for free. So that's pretty cool. Mike, yes. I'm first off, what in the world prompted you to write a book? <laughs> I mean, you know, like it, this, uh, it started out as a short blog post, right? like relatively short, like maybe about uh, like uh, five pages long. Mm -hmm. And then from there, uh, uh, like, well, we just more ideas came. And then what, what was five pages turned into this 20 page thing and then not like I'm reading through it and it's just like you know like well we should really add this tweak that and then before we knew it like we had uh, a workbook that was being developed and then well I got a bunch of beta readers uh, you being one of them for that and, and uh, got some great feedback and it was actually thanks to your feedback that we added an additional chapter to the book and, and now it's uh, a 70 page uh, trading beliefs workbook and the like people should really approach it as a workbook um, because it, you're, you're going to be doing a, a lot of work a lot of mental digging uh, in uh, in well with this book into your trading beliefs, into uh, your beliefs on money, uh, into the types of things that tend to hold traders back uh, from achieving their whatever goals that they happen to have. And the reason why is because uh, lack of awareness of beliefs. We could only take action on what our beliefs are, but if we don't have uh, awareness of like, deeper rooted beliefs, like beliefs that we may have acquired like as kids or uh, somewhere else, then that might be running in the background. We continue to make the same kind of errors and wonder why. And that, that's something that can happen for years upon years. That's what happened to me for years upon years until I finally figured out the stuff that's that's in here. You know, that really, honest to goodness, was a huge light bulb moment for me when I was going through the book. Uh, Mike asked me to read it and I was like, oh no, I don't have time to read a book. But it was actually relatively short when I got it. <laughs> and then I uh, asked him to add, you know, twice, twice as much of the book. But, um, you know, the one, I think it's a number one question in there. It was like, why do you trade? And I kid you not, Mike, I never thought of that. Not once. And of course, initially it was, oh, I can make money. Let me do that. But I mean, I blew up my account twice and the audience knows that I share that probably every episode because like I want them to know that it's not easy street. Mm -hmm. But 
there was something inside of me that kept me going and mm -hmm. has led to literally today. And I didn't ever think about why did I keep going? And I mean, even when I was at my lowest point mentally and in my account simultaneously, there was always that motivation to just keep going. And after reading Mike's book, I really distilled it down to the love of the game. And maybe it was because when I was a kid, I played lots of PlayStation and Xbox and Nintendo and all that. But there's just something about the, the point scoring, the figuring it out, the testing, failing, testing again, failing, learning, using that to go to the next level, I guess you could say. That really just resonated with me. And I never once ever in the, I've been trading since 2009, 11 years that I have been trading, did I ever have that thought until reading your book? Like you just opened my mind mm -hmm. and blew it all of a sudden with just a one simple question. Why do you trade? Of course I would trade for money. Then it's like, well, do you? So yeah. So I got to say, just right off the bat, that, that messed with my head. In a good way, really in a good way. That's fantastic. I, I, I love hearing stories like that. So, you know, m my first thought here is like, so you've got all these different questions. Why mm. did you create those set of questions? What was it about those questions that you ask? Because basically when you're reading the book, like you were saying there, it's a workbook. Mike's going to ask you questions A through Z, and it's up to you as the participant in this to actually answer those questions. And, and, you know, in theory, writing them in the book or, or writing them on a piece of paper or saying them out loud or sharing them with others. But in all reality, like, there's a lot to go through. So why did yeah. you pick those questions? Uh, it, uh, I'm, that's a really interesting question. And it's also not, it's uh, which questions to ask. And it's also the sequence in which they're asked because uh, like uh, you could throw, uh, like you could have a recipe to bake a cake, but if you, do the recipe in the wrong order, like it's going to be a disgusting yeah. mess, right? Like you have to have the right set of ingredients in the right order to produce something yummy. And so the idea with this was just like, okay, let me deconstruct uh, why somebody is even thinking to do this uh, in the first place. And then I'll, like starting to figure out, well, like what's the bigger goal J just in that? Like why, why do this? Because uh, like it, yeah, make money, of course. Uh, like that, that's what, why like we're building like a, a trading business and all that. But uh, like, what about it? Because like, there's plenty of ways to to make money. Well, what is it about trading and getting deeper into that? Great. Now we have like the bigger goal. Then it's a matter of figuring out. Well, where are we at right now? If we are, like, uh, let's say you you wanted to go outside and plant a garden, but you haven't looked out there in in a couple of years. Well, listen, they, if you're going outside, you better put a mask on. I don't care if you're just uh, planting a garden. <laughs> There's viruses out there. <laughs> oh my god. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, totally like, ruined uh, you there. I'm sorry. I was like, that's a perfect <laughs> no, opportunity no, no, for a it, joke. It's all good. It's all good. But um, but yeah. So let let's say like you you go outside and it. You know, there, there could be anything growing in this garden. Maybe there's stuff that you like that's there. Maybe there's some weeds, but you don't know what's there. So your next step then is to start to figure out like what's there, rip out what you don't want. So that way you could make room for what you do want. So it's kind of like figuring out where you're at and where you ultimately want to be and then bridging the gap. So, the, so that's what created the the questions and the structure uh, to get from where you are to where you ultimately want to go. And this being the, the bridge to get there. Um, so once you go through the the different exercises in the book to, uh, to figure out like, okay, like I've got these set of trading goals. Uh, these are what my trading beliefs are currently. These are what my money beliefs are currently. These are helping me get to that goal. These are not. So what can I do to eliminate the ones that aren't, right? Like to cut the the Gordian knot like that. That's uh, one of the, the examples in there, right? Like, um, so how do we 
Yeah, and for anybody that, that doesn't know uh, what that is, it's uh, Alexander the Great like had to um, pull a linchpin out of this giant knot in order to continue his journey forward, and uh, uh, like like he had to try to figure out like how to unravel the, this giant knot, and then he's just uh, like screw it, I could do it in whatever manner, shape, or form I want until uh, like. There's one story that's being told where, like, he pulls out, like, a giant sword and he just cuts the knot and then that's it. Then there's another version of the story where, like, he pulls out the linchpin and he's able to continue on his way. But it's uh, a matter of figuring out, like, how to unravel these uh, bigger knots that are preventing you from getting from where you are to where you want to go. Once you have that all that stuff out of the way, then it's like, well, what kinds of things do I need to get me to the promised land, right? And that, that's where I started to think through, like, well, what are the different types of skills that traders need? Well, whether you're trading stocks, Forex, well, whatever, like there's general core skills that everybody needs. And that's why what came up with, with that additional chapter. Uh, so thank you, Chris. Uh, but um, so, but, so yeah, on like, that topic, yeah. So so yeah, let, let's explore that for just a minute. Because when I got done yeah. reading Mike's book, which was the first half at this point, I emailed him and I was like, first off, you know, thank you. Because I've never asked myself that question of why do I trade? But second off, you just opened up a whole bunch of holes for me that didn't get filled. And so that's where Mike's coming from with, uh, you know, I, I helped him. Essentially, I prompted him. So he's, he was prompting me for all this stuff. And I was like, hey, I need to prompt you back, man. I just uh, I just dug this big hole. But I got nothing to fill it in with. And so that's where Mike's coming through on the second half and saying, you know, giving you the tools to, uh, to I guess, work through those beliefs, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's not like, so you dig out. Uh, so to go back to that gardening analogy, like, so you rip out all the weeds and then it's like, well, well what would be some good stuff to plant here? And then uh, that's basically like what uh, you're getting a, in that additional chapter. Like uh, to achieve your trading goals, well, whatever they are, there's eight core skills that that all traders need. And there's actually like a little nice uh, diagram in the in the back of this over here. Let me see if I can find it. Yeah, it's uh, it's this right here. I don't know if you you can see it well. I can see a little bit. So it's a circle uh, with some hands holding a brain in the middle, and then yeah. kind of going through each one of the uh, the components of that. Yeah, exactly. Like so, at the center of everything is mindset, right? Because uh, we can only act on our beliefs. So that's why, like, mindset is a skill, but it's also the uh, the the center of everything else. So, well, what I believe that everybody the 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 core skills that everybody needs that yes, mindset, but also. Uh, trade analysis and that's where most people kind of begin and end the, their journey and they just look at charts and think that, that that's it but it's far greater than that right like you I, I look at position sizing as a skill um the ability to uh manage your your por uh, portfolio right like your overall portfolio heat like how much risk do you have in your overall portfolio how are you going to manage individual trades um i see journaling as a as a skill being able to journal well, um, how to backtest. Right? Mm -hmm. Like I wish that I had a back. Uh, oh my gosh! Back Dude, that's years so ago. key. Like to every to every trade I make, I backtest it because it's like I, I'm gonna. I mean, so so in my in my system, it's, it's five steps to basically to to get on to trading, and one of them is like knowing your risk a on your size and knowing your risk b on like back testing wise, right? You can literally buy any stock at any time. Go for it. Mm. But do you have the data to support buying that stock, right? Or maybe you've come up to a moving average. Um, is that a moving average that historically has proven to be profitable? Or is that uh, a moving average that is going to be absolutely useless to you in the next 10 minutes as it falls straight through? You know what I mean? Mm. Yeah, like this all different ways to to back test data and you know like it's one of those things that uh for the majority of people that i've spoken to like uh, maybe one percent uh 
is skillful at back testing. So uh, like if the you're somebody that's listening right now and you're like, oh yeah, like I do back testing all the time, like uh, you're in a very special group. Mm -hmm. um, um, do you, you use TrendSpider for testing, right? Uh, yeah. Else? Yeah. Yeah. So you know, I use I use TrendSpider. Uh, I'm I'm loving that platform more and more. Uh, like that, they just keep on adding uh, more things. Uh, like that, they added this. Uh, that, not just a, a back testing feature, but a, a scanning feature where you, like you could create yes. your own customized scans. Dude, I love uh, the that's scans. been super helpful, and I'm I'm actually uh, in talks with them right now to create some custom indicators, where, which will be oh, cool. super interesting. That's neat. Yeah, I know Steve Burns just released a, a custom indicator. In fact, um, he is how I got like even aware of TrendSpider. He was like, "Hey, Chris, mm -hmm. I know this great guest that would be good for your show." And uh, just open the door there. And man, I tell you, just Trend Spider in general has been so game changing to me in my trading. And I mean, like anybody can use it too, right? It's not like you need a special set of skills, but it's being aware of having this stuff that it is really the, the game changer, right? Knowing that you need to backtest versus just like up and buying a stock because you feel like it. Mm -hmm. Man, that's huge. Yeah, well, like, so uh, you could either do it the hard way uh, and gain, like, tons of the experience and spend lots of money. Like, that's well, what I did early on. <laughs> and uh, I wouldn't recommend that path. Or you can backtest it, know, like, what kind of results you should expect, then go in slowly with money to, mm -hmm. to see, like, how that part of it works. And then, like, as that's working, then start to scale up. Mm-hmm. You know, it's my, much faster. It's less costly. Yeah, and and it's easy. <laughs> That's the other thing. I mean, once you yeah. figure out how to use the system, it's easy, right? Um, so you know, back on your book, we 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 dug big old holes. We're starting to fill them in. What's some of the tips that you could give, just like casually, to somebody um, to work around their money, um, not just their money, but their mindset? Um. Oh, how do you mean? Like, what's if you were to just rip a page out of the back, out of the second half? Okay. Like, what would be on that page? Like, what's a good so, tip that you could just like? Here you go. Use this. Uh, well, it, it, if we're thinking about beliefs, then one of the the things that people need to to start to think <laughs> about are it, like, well, what kind of like, well, well, what kind of things have they heard about? money lot like for uh, most most of our most of our beliefs from about money uh can come from our early childhood right lot. like a uh, early childhood like uh, most people aren't learning hearing about trading right like maybe your kids are my kids uh are <laughs> but um uh, most of us don't uh, acquire trading beliefs like at that early age but we do acquire beliefs about money right lot. like uh money's scarce people that Oh my God, my, my wife and I were actually watching. Uh, okay, like uh, here's a here's a good example, a uh, recent example too. Well, so like there's plenty of movies, uh, like around Christmas time now, uh, like the all those kind of cheesy like Hallmark kind of movies where uh, you have like the it uh, there's a girl and she's uh, uh, dating like the this uh, this rich guy and he has all this money and he just like kind of doesn't care about anything else he only cares about money and then like there's this other guy that kind of you know, comes along uh, doesn't care about money at all like uh, is uh, is poor and like that ends up being the the guy of her dreams and that story like plays out like again and again and again but like the seed that's planted in seeing a story like that and uh, like especially a lot like uh, as someone who's young is that oh like people that have money like don't care right um people that have money a lot like are generally um yeah a lot like they're they're aloof like they they acquired it by like um uh, lying cheating or stealing uh it, and money does bad things to you mm -hmm. so if uh, so it's helpful then to write out some of the things that you've uh, that you personally believe about money, things that you uh, have heard others in your direct circle say about money a lot, like uh, what have your parents what like write out 
what are your parents' beliefs about money? Or well, what you think your parents' beliefs are about money. Like you don't necessarily uh, have to go back and interview them, but like what do you feel your parents' beliefs were? How about like other people that may have uh, raised you or a bit were close to you in your uh, childhood? And then look at the people around you now. Like, well, what are their beliefs uh, about money? And so like you could start to see like how you've been influenced uh, and how your money beliefs have been influenced over time. And if you start to see like how, uh, or like if there are limiting beliefs about money, you can then see how that can prevent you from getting to your goal. Or like if you have a goal the, to be this great trader, to be super profitable, but there's also this other lingering belief that you acquired from childhood that says that people uh, with a lot of money are bad, then as you start to make progress like, and you start to experience self-sabotage, that could be one of the things that's leading to that continuous self-sabotage because you don't want to become the evil bastard with the giant pile of money. Listen, man, mine was always Scrooge McDuck. And I was always like, I want to go swimming in my pool full of money one day. That was always <laughs> it for me. <laughs> Without a doubt. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> so, Mike, it's uh, it's really cool that you went through all this effort. You know, something that started as a blog post now is a tangible book, a workbook that can mm -hmm. really help people. And I think that that's, that's really noble and, and incredible. And there are so many five-star reviews for this over on Amazon. That's what I just pulled up here. Some of the things was like, I was completely unaware of how my mind may be impacting me on a day-to-day -day basis, and especially in my trading. So what I really want you to do is uh, click the link down below. Get Mike's book today over on Amazon. And like I said, it's really inexpensive, but it's not about the cost of the book. It's the value that Mike is giving you, right? I, The fact that people take their knowledge and wisdom and put it in a book is so selfless to me because Mike, you've got millions of dollars worth of ideas, of knowledge, of wisdom, of history, and you're selling it for, you know, $10 or so or less. And the fact that somebody can like take that is, in my opinion, it's, it's one of the most selfless acts that people can do just to really bring out that information and give it to others. So first, I want to say thank you for that. And second, I want to tell the audience to go get one. <laughs> yeah, man, uh, my pleasure. Like, it, you know, like, it, it, I think that a lot of it comes from, from my background too. Like, uh, I think that we've spoken about the, that before, but like, yeah, like for, for anybody that doesn't know, like I, I grew up like in poverty, was homeless for a period of time uh, as a, as a six-year-old. And it's, uh, well, so like, I, I know what it is to struggle and struggle financially and to be like in that kind of a situation. Like, I don't want other people to experience that. And if they are, like, I, like I want to be able to help as many people as I possibly can. And so to, yeah, like, this is a, a great way to be able to do it. Uh, like something that's... Uh, affordable something that people could read not uh, uh, pretty quickly uh, like but that like you should spend a significant amount of time going through this like well one of our uh one of my clients right now is going through this book well, like he, he spent maybe about uh two weeks go, going through it so far like because yeah like the the exercises in it are are challenging mm -hmm. Uh, like uh, if you take it really seriously and you start to dig into to a lot of stuff like this, it's, uh, a lot of different pathways uh, that you could go. Um, but what you end up with is uh, a mind shift, right? Like title of the book, got to throw it in there. But yeah, like uh, you end up with such a, a, a is your, your life. Uh, and so for, uh, yeah, like the... Even like if it takes you like a week or, or two weeks to complete the exercise, like isn't that worth it for something that's going to change the course of your life? Like, yeah, it, I would think to so. me it is. <laughs> yeah, just just a little bit. I think it would. Well, Mike, really, I, I appreciate you coming on the, the show today and just kind of telling our, our audience about what they can expect when they get their own copy of the uh, the Mara. Hang on, I want to I want to say the title exactly right. Hang, let me scroll back up here. 
the Mara Mind Shift Guide, a trading beliefs workbook. So please go check it out using the link below. Uh, get started with it today. Mike, really, thank you so much for coming on and for writing this book and sharing it with the audience. Yeah, man, my pleasure. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay, so what'd you think? That was pretty incredible, right? Now, if you like that, that's only a taste, only a sample of what you're going to find in the full AI stock trading system. And I really highly encourage you to go and check this out. Obviously, you are interested in learning and how to trade, and that's why you're listening to this podcast. Now, I'm going to take and download my entire trading system that I use day in and day out onto you. <laughs> and the only way I'm going to be able to do that is over at the AIStockTradingSystem.com. You're going to get phase one, two, and three, several bonuses. And on top of that, I'm going to walk you through over a dozen trades that I put on inside of my account, holding your hand and showing you exactly how I got in, how I got out, how I use the artificial intelligence data, and how this could work inside of your own trading portfolio on a daily basis. So make sure you head on over to AIStockTradingSystem.com. That's AIStockTradingSystem.com to learn more and to get started and to download my decade plus worth of trading experience into your hands so you can start using the AI Stock Trading System today, the five-step system to take the guesswork out of trading. Hey, if you like this video, let me know by leaving me a like below and then subscribe and share it with somebody you think could use it as well. Be sure to comment below with your biggest takeaway from this episode and any suggestions you have for future episodes. And finally, make sure you watch these other videos to help you trade faster and trade smarter, and I'll see you on the next episode.